Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes tutorial. In the past, I did a tutorial about how to choose photos based on a selection from a drop down list. And that's been one of my most successful tutorials that I've done. And in that tutorial, we use the indirect function. And we'll talk about that in this tutorial. But I've come up with an alternate method to not use the indirect function. And I wanted to share that with you. But before we jump into that, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you will get a notice whenever I put out a new video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also find me at any of the social media sites you see here. So now, let's check out today's topic. Without going into a lot of detail, let me give you a brief summary of how this process works. And I'm going to include in the notes below a link to the original tutorial and also one or two other tutorials that are relevant to this process. But here in our data tab, I have four different images and I have the names grapes, glasses, sun, and heart. And I've named these cells grapes, glasses, sun, and heart. And how I accomplished that was just highlight this whole area here, go to the formulas tab, create from selection, make sure left column is selected, click OK, and it will name the cells here based on the names that are in the list, say in this case, column A. Just be careful when you do that process that you don't have any spaces in your list or else Excel will automatically include an underscore where your space is and that's going to cause problems. But again, watch some of the tutorials that I've included in the notes below for further explanation of that process. Then all I did was create a drop down list here and as you change the list it will automatically update the image and if I select the image, notice in the formula bar, it says equals wine photo. So if we go to my name manager and look at wine photo, I'll select edit, you'll see I have the formula equals indirect catalog C2. Catalog C2 is right here. And again, if you remember, sun is the name that we called cell B4. It's named Sun. So what the indirect function does is it converts the, whatever this name is into a usable item that Excel can incorporate into its formula. In this case, cell B4. So as I select these different items, that indirect function will pull in the image from that cell. And again, watch the video that I've included in the notes below of the original process to see a step-by-step -step of how I actually created this. Now the issue again is in the name manager, what I called wine photo, I use the indirect function. Now the indirect function is what's called a volatile function. There are several of these in Excel, the today function, the now function, etc. And the issue with a volatile function is that whenever you update or refresh or cause a transaction to occur in Excel, it will update all the volatile functions. And when you only have one or two or a half a dozen or so in your workbook, that's not a problem. But I've had clients who maybe have 50, 100, up to 200 different scenarios like this within their workbook and therefore every time they refresh or cause a, a formula to update it will automatically update all the different indirect formulas within that and it can cause your system to slow down potentially significantly so how do we accomplish this without using a volatile function well i created a separate workbook and the only difference between this process and the previous one is when I look at wine photos in my name manager, you'll see that instead of using the indirect function, we use the index and match function. And I'm just going to copy this 
and we'll just post it here so we can go through it in a little more detail. The index function, the array is just on the data tab, cells B2 to B5. And if we look at that, that's just the list of the different cells that contain the photos. And then our row function is using the match function, which takes the lookup value as being whatever is in my drop-down list and then comparing that to my list, in this case, that I call wine. And that list is my list of names in column A. So, and I'm using an exact match. So, in this case, when I look at the row number, it's telling me that's row number four. So, in the data B2 to B5, row four, one, two, three, four, that would be the heart option, and it pulls in the image for the heart. If I change this to a different one, say grapes, it's going to pull in a different image based on the location of grapes in this list. So by using index and match, you now don't have a volatile function in this process, and you can have dozens and dozens of different functions like this within your workbook, and it shouldn't slow it down because there are no volatile functions being used. And that's how you can accomplish this in Excel.